Get up there. Get up there. I'll break every bone in your body. Get up there. You hear me? Get the height. I don't think so much of him. You'll hurry up and do what I tell you. Oh, he couldn't even train animal crackers. You want to do what I tell you? Get up there. You never get that cat to do that trick. You don't handle them right. I don't, eh? Open up that chute. I'll show this baby who's boss. Come on, come on, come on. Get in there. Get up there. Don't you snarl at me or I'll knock every tooth out of your head. Get up, Sharky. If I ever catch you mistreating any of my animals again, you're through. Understand? The cat went for me. Honest, it is, Mr. Betty. I had to teach him a lesson. That's no excuse. I do all my training without beating the animals up. You'll have to do the same. Well, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. I, I guess I had it coming. It's all right. Let's forget it. Imagine that guy telling me how to train animals? I forgot more than he'll ever know. Just the same, you'd like to have his job, wouldn't you? Ah. Uh. How'd you like to have that one, huh? You better get that pup out of here, Sonny. One of my lions might chew him up. Don't worry, he ain't afraid of lions. Are you, Spot? He looks like a fighter. Maybe it's a good thing my lions are safe in their cages. Look out, he'll bite you. Gosh, you're a swell animal trainer, Mr. Beatty. You wait here. No, Dad. You stay here. I'll talk to Clyde. I'd better go. You'll be afraid to speak up. Please. But, Ruth, you've known about this trip for a month. Why didn't you settle all this with Clyde before? Last week? Last night? I will now, Dad. I'm a little nervous. I... I just don't know how to begin. Uh, that's no problem. Come right out and state the facts. Tell him I'm sailing for the South Seas and that I refuse to leave you in port unless you're married. Oh, I couldn't do that. That would be just like asking him to marry me. That's what you're here for, isn't it? If it isn't, then I'll drop him the hint. I'm not scared of that lion tamer. I'm not afraid either, but Clyde's afraid of me. What? He's different from other men. He spent his whole life with animals. He doesn't understand. Sure, seems that after two years of courting, he'd find out whether or not he wanted to marry you. He has. I know he wants to marry me. Ruthie, are you sure about him? Absolutely. Very well, get along. You have just 15 minutes. And if he can't make up his mind in that time, Tell him goodbye, and we'll sail for the tropics. Good morning, Miss Robinson. Hello, Larry. This is my father. Father, this is Larry Henderson, publicity man for the whole circus, especially for Clyde. How do you do? I'm certainly delighted to meet you, Captain Robinson. I know your daughter well. She and Clyde Beatty are... I know all about that. Tell me, is this man Beatty afraid of... Afraid? Listen, Captain, Clyde Beatty isn't afraid of man, beast, nor devil. I think I'd better talk to that young man. Father, is Clyde in? Could I see him? Certainly. Why not? You can see Clyde at any time. I'll take you to him. Hey, Clyde, your new lion is here. Good. I'll try him out right away. You better let him alone until he's had time to cool off. They're all bad at first. We might as well get acquainted now as any time. Can we watch the training, Mr. Beatty? All right. Be sure you hang on the spot. I don't want to take any chances. Don't worry. I won't let him get at your lion. Well, Clyde, there's someone to see you. I'm glad to see you. No one has to tell me when three is a crowd. 
I hope you don't mind my running in on you like this. Mind? Oh, why should I? I thought maybe you weren't busy. I am. Awfully busy today. Just got a new line. I, I was hoping I could see you alone for a few minutes. I really shouldn't leave. But something has come up that you should know about. What is it? Well, it's terribly important, Clyde. I... Open the door! <laughs> What were you saying? It's too big to tell all at once here, in front of these people. Can't we go outside? All right, but I'll have to keep an eye on the men. New line, you know, can be ruined the first day. Bye. Right. We got this possible case, but he ain't taking it any too well. But Clyde. Just a minute, honey. You don't understand. I have to give Dad my answer. Hurry, Clyde. It turns himself to pieces. He's failing and he wants me to... All right, all right. Whatever you say. I've got to look after that cat. Won't you wait and see Clyde break in his new line? No, thank you. Dad will be getting impatient. We're sailing today. Sailing? Where to? The South Seas. He's chartered to Professor Livingston, an expedition. Oh, yes. Yeah. But you're not going along. I don't want to, but... Now I have no choice in the matter. <laughs> These are just blanks, but the line doesn't know it. You gentlemen will excuse me? Sure. Thank <laughs> you. 
myself a minute ago. It would be a lot of hard work to train that line for my new act. But he's worth it. Are you all right, Mr. Beatty? Why did it hurt, Beatty? Gosh, I was scared. You have got nothing on me. Thanks, Sonny. I sure needed that gun. Oh, if my dog had been here, you wouldn't needed a gun or nothing. <laughs> Why don't you two try and get along? We'll get along all right. You've got to let them know who's the boss from the start, or you're through. It looks to me like you're through already. Don't kid yourself. From now on, it's going to be smooth sailing. Sailing is right. Boy, she was plenty mad when she sailed out of here. She? What are you talking about? Ruth. Oh, is she gone? And how? I guess I was a little abrupt. But I'll see you tonight and patch things up. And you didn't know she's going with her father. What? They're sailing today. But she can't. But she is. Hey, Clyde! You better be careful! Remember, Ruth isn't a lion! Professor? What is this KMO you're setting out to find? I believe the KMO will prove to be the real cradle of civilization. Is it an island? Probably. Well, how will you know when you found it? When I find an island bearing the fauna of both Africa and Asia, I'll know I'm pretty close. Fauna? What's fauna? Animals, lions, tigers, and cub reporters. sailing. Where's Captain Robinson's schooner, the Mary R? Gone. Just shoved off of the South Seas. Boy, I'll be glad when this rehearsal's over. What are you worrying about? The closer I get to this mixed animal act, the more it gives me the willies. I'm not worrying about it. I know you're not. And that's what's worrying me. Since Ruth ran out on you, you're taking too many chances. That's my business. Business? It's suicide in the first degree. You can't put lions, bears, tigers, and panthers all in the same cage. The big ones will eat the little ones, and those that don't get enough to eat will eat you. Clyde, you're the greatest animal trainer in the world. But don't tell me. Tell the world. You'll admit the act that's well for blisty angles. Well, it's stupendous. Boy, I got the swellest idea for a poster. Listen. Tell that to the boss. The most vicious man killers ever assembled under one roof will now be worked. Together! 
in the big cage for the first time in any circus by the world's greatest animal trainer, Mr. Clyde Beatty. <laughs> Well, idea for the poster. It's colossal. Now, up here in this corner, we'll have 10 lines coming out of a thick jungle. No, 30 lines. And over here... In just a minute, Henderson. Suppose we wait and see if Clyde's act as good as he's asked. Here they come. little fellows. What I'm worried about is what's going to happen when the tigers get in there. What did I tell you? Thank <laughs> you. 
the biggest thing Clyde's ever done. Boy, watch my smoke. <laughs> What did I tell you? Gracie! Tommy! Tommy! Nelly! By the time the season's over, they'll be kissing each other. <laughs> Why, it's stupendous, colossal. Greatest act in the history of the show business. Clyde, you're a... Thank you. What's the matter with him? Worry. Ruth's been gone three months and Clyde hasn't heard a word from him. Plenty of good timber, anyway. Timber? For spars, to repair the ship. From what I just saw, that'll take months. If only one of my carrier pigeons would get through to a settlement, some ship would pick us up. Hmm. I wouldn't count on pigeons. I tell you, Professor, we'll be here until we get the Mary R patched up and afloat. Or until we're all eaten by jungle beasts. Maybe. But let's get going. I'm worried about Ruth. You'll have him up and going in no time, Miss Ruth. I hope so. What happened to you, Slade? Nothing much, sir. I was lucky, but old Pat's dead. Killed? We were cutting brush. There was a roar, and a lion just tore him to pieces. Lion? The biggest one I ever saw. Rip Pat cleaned down the middle before he could wink. Are you sure it was a lion? I guess I know one when I see it. There he is now. What's that sound like to you?
Now I'm positive we're on the island of Kmore. There's no other place in the world where lions and tigers could have found in the same jungle. Think of the sensation this will cause in the scientific world. Yes, if they ever hear about it. Don't you think we could repair the wireless? There's nothing left to repair. Ruth, get me pigeons, our only hope. While you're waiting on that fool bird, we'll all be eaten by these cats. Mr. Kirby, round up the crew. We're going to build a stockade. Aye, aye, sir. They're over half gone. Well, maybe this will be the lucky one. Huh? Dry, precious. If you sit quiet, tell him, tell him I love him. Please don't fail me. Ampasa malakau kabai kai wang latai, hindi papata wal mo ako. Ayoko na. What have you got there? Magandag na maganda. Gentlemen, Livingston has found Kmore. I never thought he would. What does it say? It's from our consul at Suva. He cables that he received a message by carrier pigeon from Professor Livingston, notifying him that the expedition was shipwrecked upon the island of Kmore. It's been a great season, Clyde. In fact, we've had several great seasons. Yeah, but the public will expect an even bigger thrill next year. And I don't see how you're going to give it to them. You can figure that out for me. I'm going to the jungle for some wild animals. You mean shoot them? No, bring them back alive. Stupendous. But uh, where are you going, Glad? Oh, India for tigers and Africa for lions. Extra, all about Professor Livingston. Giant airship goes to rescue. Livingston shipwrecked in the South Sea. Read all about it, paper. Hey, boy, let's have one. Ruth is still with him. Did it say anything about her? No, nothing. That's where I'm going. Where? Kmore. What an idea. Why didn't I think of it myself? It's colossal. Boy, what publicity. What are you talking about? Guess this. Clyde's going after Ruth, but we can kill two birds with one stone. Why, the place must be full of animals. Can't you see the headlines? Beatty brings them home from Kmore. Prime evil animals from a primitive place. He takes from wilds and trains them. Where is Kmore? Oh, who cares? It's full of lions, tigers, and the Lord knows what else. Every passenger on that airship will be front page news for the next six months. Maitland, you've got to get tied on that ship. And me too. But, uh, but... Uh, Never mind it, but. Get me on that ship. Take a lot of nerve for a man to go into a cage with wild animals. It sure does, Doctor. And uh, I've had many in their uh, escape. Hmm. You work in Mr. Beatty's act? Well, not exactly, but uh, I'm always standing by in case anything happens. Beatty never makes a move without me. Why, I taught him everything he knows. There's that guy Sharky running off of the mouth again. I can't understand why you brought him along on this trip. Will you hold the other end of the rope while I'm taking a live tiger out of a trap? Or putting a snared lion into a cage? Who, me? Ha! <laughs> Not on your life. Well, that's why I'm taking Sharky along. Hey, Hexby! Here you are, mister! All about the black 
A wireless dispatch from the Victory reports that the dirigible, already nearing its goal, has encountered a low-pressure area. This generally means hurricanes at this time of year. No alarm need be felt, reads the dispatch, because a ship is built to withstand any kind of weather. It is expected that ground crews will be landed by the special gear carried on the Victory and the Livingston party contacted within the next 48 hours. I'm going to take this last pigeon just in How case. How long do you expect to be gone this time? Oh, not much more than a week. The ship will be repaired before that. And then I'm going to have trouble. You mean the men? They've endured some terrible hardships. They're frightened by those wild animals. It'll be hard to hold them here if Yes, we... but we can't go until I finish my explorations. I'm sure the cradle of civilization lies somewhere on this island. Don't you realize the importance of the discoveries I expect to make? Yes, but I also realize the seriousness of mutiny. Pretty soon, there won't be any of us left. And the professor talking of staying on until he finds that buried city. He can stay by himself. I'll be back as soon as possible. Good luck. Goodbye, Ruth. Goodbye. How much farther? Those hills. I want to make it tonight if I can. I hope that killer lion ain't following us. Who, Sammy? <laughs> I hope he is. Then let me go across first. I don't think this idea is so hot after all. Oh, there's nothing to worry about. That's merely your personal opinion. For goodness sake, let's have some music. Something's happened to the radio. The lightning struck it. The radio's gone dead, sir. Check your antenna. We're being blown off our course, sir. Dump the rest of the ballast. <laughs> Captain, the ship's breaking up. Take the other sections and report back to me. regarding the disappearance of the dirigible victory. Have you seen the late editions? No. It says here, the Naval Board of Inquiry holds that due to their construction, any part of the newer airships will tend to free balloon until its gas cells are entirely deflated. And that means? If the victory broke up as did the Akron, then we can hope that some free ballooning section may still be in the air. Of course, dinner. We started eating before we ever went into the banquet room. They serve delicious appetizers of caviar. I passed up the soup and the fish and a lot of other things because I wanted to save my appetite for the roast turkey. You never saw such a turkey in all your life. It was stuffed with chestnuts and served with cranberry sauce, sweet potatoes, plenty of giblet gravy. And for a side dish, 
They had barbecued ham with raisin sauce. You'll pardon me if I don't stay for dessert. But after 10 days of crackers, I'm sure that blackberry pie gave me a stomach ache. How did we had blackberry pie? He didn't have to guess. You've told us about that banquet at least 20 times. Look out there! The land! Why is it island? The wind is carrying us toward it. It's all covered with jungle. The rate we're traveling will be over the island in no time. Can't we bail out in parachutes? There aren't any. They were lost to the other part of the ship. Isn't there any way we can land? Well, we can let the gas out, but there's no way of controlling the ship. You mean we might crash? Well, anything is better than staying up here and starving to death. Let's take a chance. The gas is escaping too fast. We're heading straight for the island. We're bound to crash. Larry. Are you all right, Clyde? I think so. Gee, I'm glad. You're not hurt, are you? Me? Hurt by a little drop like that? <laughs> Have you seen anything of the others? No. I wonder what happened to them. Sharky! Doctor! Hey, Howard! Where are you? We better start searching for them. No use yelling anymore, Larry. Howard and the doctor. Just think, Clyde. It might have been us. They weren't as lucky as we were. But I don't see anything of Sharky. Oh, it would suit me swell if we never saw that guy again. Oh, well, Sharky's not such a bad fella. Well, we've got to find him if he's still alive.
Don't kill me. Don't kill me. I'll go away. I won't touch your treasure. I swear. Treasure? Take it easy, old man. Nobody's going to hurt you. Warner. Warner. Why can't he? Father. Ship's crew? Ship's crew? What do you mean? The ship that brought me here. They're down the stockade. We should go down there and tell Captain Robertson that I found the treasure. Yes. The treasure of Cambo. Where is it? It's here. The man that attacked me was guarding it. He must be the only survivor of the last tribe of Cable. What? What? what what's become of him? Where is he? He's there. In the pit? With the crocodiles? But what am I to tell Captain Robertson? Where is the treasure? It's in the... Hey, what's the idea? The guy here comes another one. Thanks, pal. Could not have lunch with us sometime. Yeah, and bring your own coconut. <laughs> That's service for you. Lunch is ready. Do you mind if I eat out on the veranda? Help, Clyde! Help! Whoa, wait a minute. What's your hurry? Don't stop me, Clyde. There's a bear after me. It's funny, he's running the other way. He is. but they didn't sound like that. They weren't hungry then. sorts of wild animals around here. <laughs> you should feel at home. I'd sure like to take some of them back alive. Say, if we're gonna take ourselves back alive, we'd better find a way to get off this island. Look, Larry, cartridge. See how bright it is? They couldn't have been there very long. That means there's somebody besides us on the island. Come on, let's look them up. How are we gonna fight in this jungle? You're a great animal trainer and all that, Clyde, but it takes an ex-trapeze artist like me to know his way around this kind of country. What do you mean? See yonder tree? I shall scale it and see what I shall see. See? Oh, boy, I see some huts with a high fence around them. Do you see any people? No. 
But I see smoke rising from one of the huts. Here comes the cook now. Oh, good. Did you hear anything in the captain's hut? Yeah, give us a lowdown. Kirby's telling him plenty. And the skipper ain't taking it laying down either. <laughs> <laughs> Kirby? You mean to tell me that you, the first mate of my ship, are taking sides with the crew? I don't blame them for squawking, Captain. The ship was chartered by that explorer for a six-month cruise. And we've been on this island eight months. Well, we're not going to sail until Professor Livingston shows up. <laughs> he was supposed to be back two weeks ago. But if you ask me, I don't think he'll ever show up. One of those jungle cats got him just like they got Connors and Dixon and the rest. I'm not going to leave him on the island, and that's final. Either you're going to leave him on the island, or we're going to leave you. Now you've got until tomorrow noon to make up your mind, and that's final. From myself and the crew. Back here. Nero, you naughty boy, come back here at once. Just you wait, Nero, when I get you. for a minute, Clyde. More. And you, Larry. Fancy meeting you here, and escorted by a lion. Escorted is right, especially by Sammy. Sammy? Who's he? That lion. He's the most ferocious one in the jungle. He's certainly a beauty. Isn't he, though? Such poise, such charm, such personality. If it hadn't been for you, Clyde, believe me, I'll never again object to your training animals. You mean you did object? Not at all. She just means she doesn't like it. But why, Ruth? Oh, Clyde, you were so wrapped up in your animals, you hardly had a thought for anything else. Even the day we sailed away when I came to see you. But, darling, I didn't realize then. You know, I'll, I... Uh, well, uh, you'll pardon me if I, if I find a place to sit down. Uh, my knees are shivering. I guess I must have caught cold in them or something. I'm sure glad to find you safe and sound. Were you really worried about me, Clyde? I sure was. A minute a relief expedition was announced, I decided to come along. You gave up your act just to come to me? Well, not exactly. 
You see, the circus season had just closed. There was nothing much to do. Clyde. Oh, of course, I could have started training some new cats. Then you did give up something to come to Kmore. Yes. I had planned on going to Africa for lions and to India for tigers. But you heard you could find both lions and tigers in Kmore. So you decided to kill two birds with one stone. That's right. But how did you know, Ruth? Ruth, Ruth, what's wrong? Lions, tigers, tigers, lions, that's all you ever think of. I wish you'd never come here to save me. I wish I were dead. What's the matter with her? What a lover. Don Juan, Romeo. This is marvelous. What is it? Iguana. Iguat? Iguana. It's a native lizard. Larry. No, thanks. I'm afraid you'll fatten me up for Sammy. Don't lions like fat people better than thin ones? <laughs> you better ask Sammy. I'm afraid if I ever met Sammy face to face, I'd, I'd stutter. Don't tell me you're scared of him. Not much. Every time I think of that cat, I get an impediment in my speech. And in my legs, too. <laughs> <laughs> Let me help you, Ruth. Thank you but I can get along without your help. What's the matter with you two? She's just glad to see him, that's all. Don't tell me you've had a quarrel already. Oh, Clyde will patch that up all right. He knows how to handle women. Tell me, Captain. If you're so worried about Professor Livingston, why don't you search for him? I don't dare leave the crew. Why? The Mary R is repaired and ready to sail. The men are determined to leave tomorrow. They're on the verge of a mutiny. That's bad. Of course, I can't really blame them. Lions and tigers have killed over half. And lately, Sammy's been trying to enter the stockade. Why don't you kill him? We can't get a shot at him. And we haven't enough ammunition to hunt him down. Then why don't you catch him? Not a chance of that. He's too smart. Have you dug any pits? No. That's what you need. I'll show the men how. We'll catch some of the animals alive. If you can do that, maybe I can hold the men long enough to find Livingston. Stockade can't be so very far from here. And the ship, too. Well, if I'm ever going to get off this island, I'd better get down and make friends with Captain Robinson and his crew. I understand you men have given me until noon today to give you my answer. Right. What do we say? Well, let's have it. Here it is. I'm the master of the Mary R. She'll sail from this island when I give the word, and not before. We're sailing. You can't stop us. No, no, You've no, got to be sure to be eaten alive. We're sailing, man. Stop. I'll shoot the first man that tries to board ship. You men have been panic-stricken, terrified by these jungle beasts. But now that Mr. Beatty has built traps for us, there's no further cause for fear. He ain't caught anything yet. Fear no. me. He's trying to get in again. No, it's a tiger. I think he's in the pit. We've caught him. Don't shoot him, Captain. I want to take him back alive. Alive? How? He can let us have some rope to make a net. We've a ship that for loading cargo. Would that do? Yes, that's just the thing. And after you get him in the net, what are you going to do with him? Build a cage and put him in it. Look, Dad, I'm going to shoot the tiger. Don't forget, Kirby. This thing belongs to me. Hey, what's the big idea? 
sorry I had to do this. But I want that tiger alive. You want? All right, Kirby. Mr. Beatty plans to take some wild animals back to his circus. Okay, if you say so. Oh. Hey, fella. Lend me a hand with the net, will you? And I'll slip you a couple of passes to the circus. Listen. I've seen all the wild animals I want to see on this island. And I don't care for freaks. <laughs> Get a hold of the corners. Don't drop it now until I give the word. And be sure you keep clear, or he'll drag you in. Now! How do you like that? <laughs> You're gonna meet a lot of new friends when you get back to the circus. Oh, it's no use. That's no way to act. Nobody will like you. Quit cutting your arms! Hey! I'll have you free in a minute. Make it 30 seconds. I'm slipping. That was a close call. Well, let that be a lesson, please. <laughs> Baby slipped that tiger into the cage like it was a chip. He sure knows how to handle animals. I'll say he does. One or fifty, it's all the same to Baby. With him here, we'd be pretty safe from the cat. What do you men say to going out to find Livingston? lovebirds. I always said Clyde had strange powers. Uh, what did he do? Use the hypnotic eye? No, he lassoed him. Oh, I don't mean the midget here. I mean you. Uh, have you forgiven him? I have not. Here comes Dad. It looks like he's had a satisfactory talk with the crew. It's all settled. The men aren't enthusiastic about staying here, but they'll do it. I'll bet they really want to see Clyde work on some more animals. When do we start? Right away. Livingston expected to find the buried city of Kmore somewhere in the mountains. Then that's where we should search first. I know the way. The professor showed me a map he had drawn in his diary. Kirby? You heard him ask me not to shoot the tiger, didn't you?
Larry. It's Sharky. Get some water. It's no use. Why, it's Livingston's diary. There's a map of the island. And there's a mark. The cave. Buried city. Treasure. And Sharky's been there. He's seen Livingston. We've got to go to him. Right. We'll find the treasure. Have the men step lively, Mr. Kirby. We want to catch the tide. Aye, aye, sir. Up for men. So long, Sammy. See you in the circus. It's been a lucky trip for you, young man. You got everything you wanted, didn't you? Yes, sir. I wonder Sammy the minute I laid eyes on him. And there he goes. Isn't there anything in this world you want besides lions? Why, yes, there is. When you see, I, uh, yeah. Young man, when I got married, I said, let's get married, and that's all there was to it. Yeah. And that's just a hint, Captain. Drop the kids. Clyde! Sammy's tearing himself to pieces. Come on, Clyde! 